Welcome to another video tutorial by 2dgameartguru.com. Today I'm working in Finish Designer to show you how to take a sketch to a line art using the pen and the pencil tool. I'll show you how to taper the strokes by working with the pressure panel as well as adding shapes behind the line art for the colors. Let's get started. I got the sketch of a Kraken I did with pencil and pen. I imported it and I will set the opacity lower. I don't need it to be stark black, that way I can see the difference of where I've been working. So I set it to 25%, anything between 10 and 25 is okay. I really just want it to be lighter. Then I lock that layer and add a new layer on top, which I call line art. I like to organize my layers for easier selection and editing later on. With the pencil tool I have the option of adding the stabilizer. In this case I tried both the stabilizer and non-stabilizer. It didn't make much of a difference. It just works faster when you don't have the stabilizer on. So for this design I kept the stabilizer off. It creates a few more nodes. The lines might be a little uneven but I can edit that later with the node tool. So let's get started by drawing the lines. I try to start with either the most important object or work back to front so that my layers reflect where the element is in my design. It is helpful to switch between the pencil and the note tool. In this case I didn't finish the tentacle so I go in with the note tool and adjust my notes to finish that part. For this, I work with a graphic tablet. I'm using a XP Pen R22 Pro, which gives me the on-screen display, making it a lot easier. You would want some kind of pen input device, either the iPad with the Apple Pencil or a Wacom or other graphic tablet. If you're using a mouse, I would suggest the pen tool rather than the pencil tool. Add the essential nodes, smooth them, and then go in with the node tool to add and adjust. It is not quite as free-flowing as drawing, but it will get you a very similar result. Now that I've added the details using a thinner brush, I can go in and adjust my nodes. This is the big advantage of working with vectors. Everything is easy to edit. I can fill gaps, make sure that the lines connect and then go in and adjust the curves. In this case, I want the ends to fade out. So in this case, it's the wrong end. So I reverse the curve to switch the way it's running. I do the same thing with the others. I save my pressure profile In this case I need both ends to taper, so I change that. When working on something like this, or branches for example, I try to keep it thicker and then continuously run thinner. In this case there's a bulge in my tentacle, I'm fixing that. I take some of the nodes out and work with less nodes to get the look I'm after. Sometimes it's easier to just delete the bits I drew if it's behind other elements and just draw one continuous line that flows nicely and gives me the right feel and then go in and mask it and delete the elements I don't need. I switch to the pixel persona, use the eraser with a basic brush and delete the elements that are hidden by the tentacles in front of it. I switch back to the designer persona and continue editing. The changes I did to the left tentacle, I want to do to the right tentacle, it just doesn't feel to flow right. Here I need to connect two separate lines, I select both of them, use the node tool and go to join curves and it makes it one line that I can then easily edit. With the line art complete, I lock that layer and create a new layer below it that is called color. This will contain my color shapes. I lock the line art layer and give it a 20% opacity. 
that way I can see my lines better. Saying that, I made the mistake when recording to not keep my outlines on these color shapes. So when I draw them now, the video recording did not keep track of the lines I drew. So using the pencil tool, I just drew the tentacle shapes one at a time. That way I can color them independently. I did speed up this part of the video, as all you can see are the tentacles magically appearing on the screen now and me editing the notes afterwards to match and fill everything within the line art. Just like before, it's helpful to combine the different tools, the pencil tool with the note tool or the pen tool. You can do the same thing if you're not comfortable with the pencil tool, go with the pen tool. Add the essential notes. You don't have to do too many. You can do a curve and just put some on and then go in and smooth them. You can then go in with the note tool and add more or adjust the curves. It's a quick and easy way once you are comfortable with the pencil tool. I find that way faster than trying to do proper busy curves straight away with the pen tool. Play around with it and find the approach that works best for you. With the base shapes done and a little bit of adjusting, I can now go in and color them. I give the different tentacles gradients to make them stand out more and darken the ones in the back rather than lighten them. Next up are the little details. I create a new layer for those and start drawing the color shapes behind those. I'm going to add a bit of shading to it, but then I create another layer, just calling it shading, and start drawing some lines with the pen tool. There'll be tapered strokes as highlights for the tentacles and the body shape. So I want them a little bit thicker and very pointy towards both ends. Basically a flat pressure curve with just one spike in the center. I want the same effect applying to all these highlights rather than adjust the layer mode for one element. I adjust the layer mode for the layer group and set that to overlay. The blend mode might work better if I set it to hard light rather than the overlay. The overlay gives me too much color and I want a stronger highlight. And a little bit of blur and I've got my highlight. And if I create anything new in that groove, it will automatically adjust those effects to the new element. The same process applies to the shadows. Rather than go with the hard light, I go with the multiply. And as the color, I choose the darkest tone I've already got in my design. The layer mode multiply will shade it down rather than be the same color it darkens the tone below giving me a very nice warm shadow I add a few color shapes to the highlights, giving the base a bit of a pattern.
I love working with the gradient transparency. It allows for really nice shading and good control. I can now add effects, for example, an adjustment layer that allows me to shift the colors from orange to a more purplish, bluish tone. The right kind of background gives the design a completely different look. I hope you enjoyed this video. There are many ways to approach this. This is just one of them. This is the way I like to do it. I find it rather fast and a lot more flexible than using a vectorizing tool and getting a whole bunch of notes that become very hard to edit later on. Here everything is pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I can change, alter and adjust with these. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned something new, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button and let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see on my blog, in my channel and I will see you again soon.